creating conversations with the storytellers of the world. That's what we do on Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E.net. We are unplugged and totally uncut with Elizabeth Acevedo. Hi, Arrow. I'm doing well. How are you? Absolutely fantastic. I'm so proud of you as a poet because uh, so much poetry and slam poetry is is lost in history because people tend to run away from it. But boy, look at you go. Look at you go. Wow. <laughs> well, I appreciate that, and I agree with you. I think oral storytelling can often be pushed to the side, but it's been fascinating to watch the ways that I can, you know, maneuver literature and bring it with me. Well, one of the things that I've learned as, as being a poet and be, being a poet and everything like that is the fact that you know limericks and even poetry in in, in you know in the, in the Sandinista War in Central America, poetry was used as the spoken language because you can say things in poetry that that just that, that move the emotions. Oh, yes, entirely. I mean, if we look back, it's only for the last three or 400 years that, you know, the majority of civilization is literate, right? For such a long time, we had the griots in Western Africa. We had the troubadours in Europe. You know, we've carried stories and poems and, and you know, orally as ways to communicate with each other and to remember, to, you know, keep history alive. The, to take that step, though, because we have listeners that I call hider writers, they'll write the poetry, but then they hide it. They don't want anybody because they're, they're so afraid of, you know, of being judged and stuff. But it, it requires people like yourself, Elizabeth, to bring them forward. I mean, Arrow, I think it's tough because I, I want everyone to write. I think that writing makes you empathetic. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I want to share, right? Because there's some things that maybe you should keep to yourself. Like they're just, um, it's cathartic or it may be you processing. And so if you're a hider writer, which I am stealing that term, Arrow, <laughs> I think it's okay if, you know, there are certain pieces of writing that are just for you. However, if you write something and you think this really is something I've not heard, this would offer a new kind of thinking to the world. You know, I do hope that you find the bravery to to get it published or or make a video of it or get it recorded because we do need those point of views and um, different kinds of writing we've not seen before. To put the illustrations with them, I tap into this so, so easily. And the reason why is because the only way I could get my poetry out there was that I would paint the, you know, on a canvas and I would put my poetry on the canvas. And then people would come to the, fo- I mean, uh, uh, to the painting itself and then they would pick up on the poetry. Was it, is that the same type of experience that you had? It's like, I'm going to use the pictures to invite, but then the message is going to be within the picture. I mean, this is my first time doing an illustrated poem. I think in many ways, I wish that I knew how to paint, and it's probably why my writing has so much imagery, because I see what I want to express, but I've only ever had language as a way to communicate what I'm trying to say. So this new you know, book that I have coming out that has these illustrations has shown me so much about what I've been trying to say um, and the way that the images really can bring something to life. I'm hoping that, you know, folks who are more interested in the illustrations will find the messages. I think it's a beautiful marriage between language and, and visual art. Well, you're so right about that because the writer needs a voice. I've always believed that I've been in radio for 43 years because the writer in me found a stage. And, and, and you're doing that as well as, as a poet and as a writer. Oh, entirely. I mean, I'm so thankful that even as a young person when I was really, really little, that I I believed in myself enough to write and I believed in myself enough to share my work with, you know, my neighborhood, with with the the guys, with the rappers on the corner who, when I was eight years old, would call me the little shorty hip-hop artist, right? And (laughs) my first workshop, right, were those dudes on the corner. Um, And was able to share it in high school and at Poetry Slams that it offered me so much confidence when I was so insecure. I could take three minutes on a stage and, and own my own body and have agency. Um, I, I mean, there's not enough that I could say about the kind of power you can feel as a teenager to, to own your own word. As a creative spirit and somebody who brings stories forward by way of poetry, how did you get through the mess that we have with people that have totally different interpretations? Or do you just say, if that's what you feel this is about, then, then, it's, then it's for you to hold? I mean, Arrow, to be very honest, I used to be a teacher, right? I was an eighth grade English teacher. And so I try to teach students to do close reading, Um, not just what your interpretation is, although that has validity, but what are the actual words on the page? My writing, I think, is very specific, and I try to be very precise with my language. And and I also know that once I put something out into the world, it's no longer mine. That's right. And so people come up 
interpretations, I can only say, well, can you provide textual evidence, right? There's a teacher again. Um, but oftentimes people, you know, will find what they're going to find. And if, you know, you're not doing a close reading, you might find something that I didn't mean to get across. And if you are doing a close reading, um, you might be able to find things that I was, you know, kind of secretly weaving through and, and you're going to find those little Easter eggs. And, and so for me, I don't really bother myself with what a poem does or a piece does once. How do you, how do you talk with uh, or share the journey with somebody who's into spoken word? Because slam poetry to me is, is, is also spoken word just as much as rap music is spoken word. Oh, I completely agree. I mean, I think they're all oral poetry. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're just uh, different categories within oral poetry, right? But but to me, hip hop was the first place where I came from, and I and I knew that was poetry. And then I had spoken word and um, participated in poetry slams, and that's poetry. And I think what I'm doing now, right, is also poetry. So I don't know that these distinctions, um, to me, they all fall under the same umbrella. Well, congratulations on Inheritance, a visual poem. You got to come back to the show anytime in the future, Elizabeth. The door is always going to be open for you. I appreciate it so much, Arrow. I had a wonderful time. Thank you for having me. You be brilliant today, okay? Yes, you as well. Thank you.